Hi, it's Ross here from Wizards Code and what we're looking at here is a, a terrain, a map that I use in my tower defense game. So it's essentially a terrain with a single path running through the middle of it and the enemies kind of run along this path and you build towers along the edge and well you get the idea it's a tower defense game. Uh, but this is quite a big map and it's used later on in the game uh, for some very specific uh, strategies that you need to employ. And it's not really suitable for the beginning of the game when the player is learning what's happening. So what we are going to do in this video is we are going to create a new scene. And we're going to call it Short and Sweet. There we go open that up and what we're going to do is we're going to use a bunch of a bunch of procedural worlds tools and we're going to uh, use uh, an awesome technologies tool as well so that's Gaia Pro, Ambient Skies and Complete Terrain Shader from Procedural Worlds and then Vegetation Studio Pro from Awesome Technologies. So let's start off with Gaia Pro we're going to use that to create our initial terrain uh, and specifically the, sh the site map sorry the height map within that terrain so this is going to be a tiny map uh, like I said I want it to be very small we are not going to use Gaia Pro to create the biome so that's the uh, texturing and the vegetation we're going to use vegetation studio pro for that later we are going to use the flying camera. I'm not going to use ambient sky samples uh, because I am going to use the full ambient skies later. But if you don't own it, I do recommend um, starting out with one of these samples, a really good starter point. Um, you can't actually turn the water off, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to delete that once we start up. I don't want any water in this, and consequently, I don't want underwater effects. We're going to use the wind zone from Vegetation Studio Pro. We're not going to use the screenshotter. So let's create our terrain. This will create a basic terrain, and it will put uh, the Gaia Manager into, uh, sorry, the Gaia Tools into the scene. And so let's just get somewhere where we can view the whole terrain. I'm going to clear the console. You don't worry about those. This is uh, there's some bugs in uh, Unity uh, in the UI. Um, so we select the stamper, and what we have here is the terrain. Uh, the sea level is this blue bit here, but I'm not going to be using the sea at all. So let's just turn that visualization off, and we'll just work with the terrain at the bottom here. Um, now, um, I'm not going to give you a full uh, tutorial of how to use uh, Gaia Pro. Uh, I do have another video on that, and there's a whole load of procedural world videos on it too. So I'm just going to go straight in and start selecting stamps. So what I'm going to be doing here is um, using the stamping process in Gaia to create the terrain very quickly. So I'm selecting various different stamps and positioning them on the terrain and then stamping them in to create a height map. And then gradually build up the terrain that I want with the space for the path to run through the middle of the, uh, of the map here. Uh, and there's lots of tools within Gaia Pro. Um, in this particular uh, session here, I, I'm not using many of them. I'm, I'm really just stamping a bunch of height maps. Uh, here, I'm uh, making sure it's only applied to a certain area and so on. Um, there is another video that I have. Uh, it's linked on the screen there, Gaia Pro Speed Level. And you can go and check that out. That goes into much more detail about how to use this. And Procedural Worlds, the publisher of this uh, asset, they have loads of really good videos on uh, YouTube. So we're nearly done here. Let's go back to real time. So there we have our basic terrain. Uh, let's just click off the stamper so we lose the previews and stuff. Um, we can fly around here. And that looks pretty good to me. Now we need to texture it. So to do that, we're going to add Awesome Technologies, Vegetation Studio Pro. 
and that will give us this system now again I'm not going to go into details about how you do this I do have other videos uh, that explain how you build the biomes and so on uh, for Vegetation Studio Pro I'm actually going to reuse a biome that I previously had uh, I had created so I'm going into hills and mountains and I have a base checks textures biome for hills and mountains I'm going to um, drop that into my biomes I'm going to call that default textures well, it's just de yeah default textures we'll call it because this does not have any vegetation in it it only has the textures so I click on edit textures and I go through to edit terrain textures and these are the textures that are in use in this biome I'm going to apply them to the terrain and straight away we you see the base texture being applied uniformly across the whole environment and now I'm going to go to the splat maps I'm going to say generate the splat map and you can see we've got some cliff faces here we got some rocks we got some a couple of types of grass and so on and we immediately have some texturing based on how I had previously set up this biome and I can of course tweak this biome and change it for this particular environment uh, if I want to a good idea if you're thinking you might do that is actually to duplicate the biomes for each uh, world that you create but I'm just going quick I'm just prototyping here um, we do have some sand there which I'm not sure that that looks good but we can fix that later um, but this is looking pretty good let's put some uh, grass into this area so I can go again to my base uh, uh, um, textures here and go to base details and drop that in as a new biome uh, oh, I'm not, I need to click on the biomes, uh, drop the details in on the new biome and this does have vegetation in it so here we have the base details let's call it the default details in this case and if I go to edit biomes and go down to the oh, select the base details and you can see I've got some rocks and some grasses and so on and these are set up to spawn according to the criteria and rules that I have applied here and so all I need to do in order to see what this looks like is nothing because <laughs> here we are in the scene view you can see the grasses and 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 um, plants and so on now again I can just I can modify this uh, if I want to if it doesn't look the way that I want but I'm going for speed and so I am going to go with just this setup if I come over here you can see that there's very little growing on the cliffs which is of course what we would want I'm not sure about these appearing here which does imply I need to do a little bit of fine tuning of this biome well I can do that a little bit later uh, let's go forward and to go forward we want to now add some trees so we have our base trees for hills and mountains and there you go it's done I have trees it really is that simple I have a prototype level to work with in my game except for one important thing I don't have my path created at this point so let's do that what do I use for my path well I use a tool called easy roads 3d and I'm just thinking about how I do this that's right I go over here and I say 3d object and I go to easy roads 3d new road network and it says hey I've got some uh, new terrains here do you want me to add 3d oh, do you want me to make a backup yes because easy roads 3d does change the terrain and you need to be able to go back if you make a mistake uh, and it's now saying do you want to import all the side objects and, and the road objects that I can I, I have available and for you to use in this and I said yes to each of those two so now I have uh, this this um, easy road 3d in and I can use this to create a path through my terrain 
So let me see, where will my path go? Um, it would be helpful to turn off Vegetation Studio at this point so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go from where this sand is, or actually just a little bit up here because there's this ridge here. I'm going to come around this way and then along here and off around about the middle over there. So let's go over here. Okay, so what I do is I go to my road network and I click on this little road icon here. I select the road type. I only have one as my default, which is a path of, path of pebbles. Click add new road object or add new object. And I'm now in the mechanism for adding new points. And you see, use shift click to add markers. So I add a marker right at the beginning. And then I simply go through my scene, putting markers in where I believe I need them. And I can edit these markers later, so I don't need to worry too much at this point about getting it perfect. I don't have to worry about what the terrain is doing. Um, although, you know, I will want to follow, roughly speaking, the um, terrain. But uh, I don't need to worry too much because uh, it will be adjusted uh, later on. Uh, the terrain itself will be adjusted later on by a uh, 3D tool. So you can see I now have my path. It's given me a spline. It's put the, uh, the, the pebbles in, but there's a few problems here and there. Well, that's easily fixed. I go to this icon here and I click Build Terrains. And there you go. I now have a path that goes all the way through my terrains. It's already set up this path uh, to, to behave the way I want to. I'm just going to move this up in order to edit it i need to go into edit mode again I'm just going to move this off the terrain a little bit there so it doesn't end abruptly or rather whilst the terrain still exists i'll do the same thing at this end here there we go go back to build terrains and i can now play with the setup of this road you can see how it's leveled the terrain here and here if i go back to edit mode you can see what it's going to do here uh, this is a default uh, path that I've set up. Um, I don't have a video on how to use this just yet. I should do a separate video on exactly how you set these terrains, these tools up. But now I have the path, let's turn Vegetation Studio back on. Now we see a problem straight away. Our path is there, but Vegetation Studio has put plants on it, which we clearly don't want easy to fix we have integrations between vegetation studio pro and uh, easy roads so go back to edit mode we select our road network and we come over to our settings over here and in terrain management we can select this setting here biomask area and that will add integration with vegetation studio pro and uh, then once I've done that, I want to click active, which makes this particular thing active. So do you really want to update your road network? Well, yes, I do. Um, and then uh, you'll find that you now have, if I select the path, you now have a biomask area attached to this road network. Uh, now, if I scroll down, you can see that it, it has the road biome attached to it, but there's nothing happening. It's cleared the vegetation off, but there's no vegetation being planted. Um, well, that's easily fixed because I have a biome and it is already set up for roads. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into details about how you create those biomes. You can check out some of my Vegetation Studio Pro videos to see that but we drop that into here and we now have a road biome and it is now applied you can see we have vegetation at the sides of the roads and it cuts off at the roads um, i can also go into here and i can generate the splat map which will change the texturing along the road here it's fairly subtle what i'm doing on this particular map but you can see now that the texturing just fades out into the normal texturing here and the grasses and things have changed a fair bit as well and if uh, if we're lucky we'll find some rocks and so on that have spawned along the way there so let's go into build our terrain and have a look 
that looks pretty good. Okay. But I'm going to make it nicer one last way. Procedural worlds, ambient skies, add ambient skies. And it says, hey, you're not using this. Do you want to do you want to save the existing settings? Um, yes, please. So I enable me to go back. I want to use HDRI skies. I'm going to go with, um, let's see, sky six low. No, it's a tutorial. We want it kind of nice and bright. Let's sky six high. Looks pretty good. So now we have some clouds and, and and some better lighting in the scene. Our texturing looks okay. There's something we can do to improve that too, which we'll do in just a moment. Um, but before we do that, let's add some post effects. Um, we're just going to go with the default from Ambient Skies because they do look pretty good. Um, and again, we're going for speed. Finally, go to lighting. We'll enable the light maps, and we will have Unity, or rather, Ambient Skies, automatically place our um, probes. This will just improve the quality of our lighting when we bake the lighting. We can later go in and fine tune what this does, and uh, and you know really build upon what we create here. Uh, the final thing that I want to do is just improve these textures. So they do look pretty good already. There's not a huge amount of problem with uh, with what we've got here. But if I go to Procedural World CTS. Um, add CTS to terrains then I go to my terrain and I can find CTSs at the bottom down here um, I actually already have a CTS profile set up for these textures uh, and, and this kind of setup so I'm just going to reuse that again I have a video on how you set uh, um, uh, CTS up but now you can see my texturing looks a lot better it's a lot smoother um, there's not as much tiling, the colours are a lot more uh, blended, although this is a little too green for my liking. I might want to just tweak that a little bit. Um, not going to do that right now. Um, we're going for speed and, and, and prototyping here. So the last thing that I want to do on this is generate the lighting. This is going to be quite slow, so I will pause the video here and come back shortly. All right, so that looks pretty good for a 25 minute terrain uh, to create a new map. That is ideal. I would spend a lot longer creating the final map, but I am in prototype stage and 25 minutes to create a map is ideal. So in the next video, I'll show how I put this into the game itself. For now, time to go and have a cup of coffee and say goodnight to my daughter. See you soon.